To kick off Vamp Month, I'm going to begin with the toy which started it all. The G.I. Joe Multipurpose Attack Vehicle, the 1982 Vamp with its driver clutch. Now the Vamp is styled after the 1977 Lamborghini Cheetah, which was a four-seat military prototype test bed, which unfortunately failed its trials, but Lamborghini eventually evolved that into the Lamborghini LM002. Now, vamp, the Vamp and Clutch uh, first appear in the 1982 comic book issue number one, and they're both fairly prominent throughout the very early years of the G.I. Joe comic book. In 1983, uh, the Vamp and Clutch both appear in the cartoon miniseries, the five-parter A Real American Hero, or better, better known as The Mass Device. But Clutch himself doesn't really get a very good speaking role until the third part or third episode within that series. The Vamp is a fairly simple vehicle, simple and sturdy, which is to its benefit. And it doesn't have too many features on here. It does have this uh, this brush, brush bar or tow bar, if you will. As well as having a rear mounted basket, which holds the two gas cans. And the gas cans have a handle which easily fits the figures. They're also uh, usually made of quite flexible plastic so um, I, I wouldn't worry too much about breaking the thumbs or breaking the handles on here. And of course the Vamp has its trademark 7.62 millimeter machine gun which elevates and of course swivels all around. It's supposed to be um, I guess computer synchronized or something because there aren't any handles for a figure to be uh, uh, manning it from behind. Of course all the 1982 uh, medium sized vehicles had a, a special little gimmick and the gimmick on this particular item was that there's this trigger on the side here which activated a spring on the inside of the machine gun and simulated re recoiling barrels. Unfortunately, because the um, uh, trigger is a bit stiff, what you wind up doing is you wind up putting a bit of pressure and, and sort of uh, making the cannon housing a bit uh, a bit easier to pop the whole machine gun off, which is kind of where most people kind of lose it because it's not really very well snapped in there. Another thing too is that you might find that uh, after extended play use of using the barrels, the barrels will actually get a bit scuffed up in the front here. So that's something you might want to look out for if you're trying to find one of these on the aftermarket to make sure that that's, uh, that's not too badly beaten up. And of course all the items, even the machine gun housing itself, can be popped out rather easily. And of course it has a non-turning steering wheel which is Another thing which you might want to look, look for on the aftermarket, make sure it's there. Generally speaking, the only weak point on the toy itself is where the roll, roll cage meets the hood. Sometimes that gets separated or even breaks off, but um, that's nothing that glue can't handle. Of course, just to remove the figure real quickly. And the Vamp's other main feature is that it rolls really well. As a matter of fact, no matter how old one of these are, they, they always seem to roll really well. And that's because instead of the wheels being pegged into um, a very uh, solid chassis, it actually has a metal, metal rod connecting the two wheels. That actually helps it roll. It's quite, quite a lot like a die-cast uh, Hot Wheels car in that regard.
most of the other vehicles in the line would, would not ever have that sort of arrangement. Unfortunately, once dirt or even rust gets trapped within the uh, housing, it tends to make the, uh, the wheels squeak, but that's probably best left for a repair video. The six vamps in my collection are insignificant to how many variations of the vamp mold were made since 1982. There's a red plastic racing vamp and a blue plastic police vamp made in India. A black plastic with yellow trim SAS Panther from the Action Force line. A tan plastic vamp from Brazil, which is different from the one that I have. A green plastic vamp from Brazil, also different from the two that I have. There's the 1989 Tiger Force Tiger Sting. And there's even a medium green vamp with silver trim called the Street Striker from the 1994 Street Fighter movie line. And there's even more variations out there that I don't have photos of. Now the vamp comes with a driver with the code name Clutch. And a clutch is a device which controls and transfers mechanical force from a source, like, in, in, like an engine, to another part, like a drive shaft on a car. So he has been named after a very integral part of a vehicle. The figure comes with, well, he just comes with a helmet, which is the standard helmet which all 1982 figures came with. Uh, and as a matter of fact, his he is made up of a lot of reused parts from the 1982 series of figures, except for his chest, which was unique to him. As a matter of fact, this chest would only be reused for the other version of Clutch in 1984. Now, as a character, uh, he doesn't have really that much personality in the, uh, in the cartoons. But in the comic books, I always tend to remember him as the guy who keeps annoying Scarlet because he keeps on coming on to her and she keeps on brushing him off. And while that could be annoying as a, as a character as you're reading it in the comic books, at least Clutch was very clever. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.